Hello everyone, it's me Bryson P and welcome to another video. Today I feel like doing a pretty fun one, at least it feels like it'd be fun to me and I hope it's fun for you. It is what should you know before you visit Norway. This is Norway versus America, what you should know before you visit. So I'm just going to jump straight into this because again I've just been amazed at y'all's culture and the way that things are different. I've always wanted to travel to different countries and view different things and just experience things outside of the United States. You know, even though there's a lot I've not experienced here in my own country, I feel like I always have an opportunity to do that versus, you know, how often would I really have the opportunity to go across the, the world to another country. So I always have time to explore my own, but I want to explore yours. So here we go. I'm going to jump straight into it. And yeah, let's go. Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're in dun, 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 the land of the Vikings. We're in Norway, and today what we have for you are some of the differences that you should know between Norway and the U.S., so you're more prepared for when you do come to Norway to visit Oslo or Bergen and see the fjords and things like that. So let's get started. Now the first thing you should know is about the language. Now here in Norway they speak Norwegian, which is similar to Swedish and Danish, but it is very much a different language. Um, you might understand a few words if you say them out loud, but in general you're going to have a tough time with Norwegian. But don't worry, people here speak English very well, so you'll be okay. All right. So that's the first thing. You wow, don't have to worry yeah. about the language that's, barrier. That's very you'll different. be alright. Now the second thing you should know about when you come here is the money. What money do I use? They are not in the European Union here. They do not use the Euro. They use the Norwegian okay. Krona or Crown. And when you look at it, if you're going to put it in your thing, what is USD to whatever, it's N-O-K. But when they put the money down, the price is down, they put a K-R next to it. So if it's 500 Krona, it's 500 K-R. Okay. So is there a reason why that's different? I'm just curious on that. I mean, why it goes from N-O-K to K-R? You know, like how ours is always USD. Right, you know the you got one U.S. dollar, and then you see it in conversions as USD. So I'm just was curious on that. Okay. Now, if you're looking at the kind of money you'll be playing with, and when you are here, most of the time you're going to be using your credit card, and make sure you have a PIN number for that credit card. I can't tell you how many times, like PIN number, please. Now, most of the times you can sign, but just know it's just going to be a lot easier if you have a PIN number for your credit cards. Now, if you want to go get money out from the bank, the ATM is called a, a mini bank, so it's kind <laughs> of funny. It's like, oh, a mini bank, how cute. I like that. Though. Yes, and they're all over the place in cities. You'll be fine. I don't know though. I don't even know that I would use many. Oh, that I would use ATM. Like that just sounds cool, you know. To me, and I guess I don't know. Maybe I'm just that type of person, but I like mini bank. That just sounds cool. That sounds so much better than going to the ATM. You know, if I was, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start saying that now. I'm gonna start telling my friends, yeah. Hey, I'll be right back. I gotta run over here to the mini bank right quick and get about twenty bucks. Yeah, I gotta go pull forty dollars out of the mini bank. That sounds so much better than an ATM. Now, if you're going to the fjords and things like that, it might be a little more difficult to find. But don't worry, pretty much most of the places will take credit card anyway, so you'll be all right. But if you go and you get money out, if you're looking at the bills, the bills come in at 50 krona, 100 krona, 200 krona, 500 krona, and once in a blue moon you'll see a 1,000 crown note. But the thing is, if someone gives you a 1,000 krona note, tell them, no, no, I don't want it, I want two 500s. Because some places will be like, I'm sorry, I don't know if that's real. So be careful with that one, okay? But most likely you're never going to see it. So in terms of the coins, you have a 1 krona coin, a 5 krona coin, a 10 krona coin. How come some of yours has holes, though? That's definitely a good question to ask. So you got... You got... You got one right here. That's a one. And then... So that's a kroner. And that's a Norge? Or that's, that's a Norge bank or whatever. But Okay, so what's, why does that say that says five and that's five? I like I like it's got crowns on it though. But why do, they, why do these have holes but these don't? That's a very... That's definitely something I would like. I'm curious on. I've never seen... Why they would have holes and not holes? Why come they don't all have holes? <laughs> Sorry. Coin and a twenty krona coin. So you have those when you're out here. You'll be fine with those, and you can pay with your for your hot dogs and stuff like that when you are here. 
Now the next thing you want to look at is in terms of prices. Now one of the big things you should know is Norway is not cheap. This is a very expensive place. Going to get a beer at a bar can be between 10 and 20 dollars for a beer depending on the exchange rate. Or sorry, it's kind of between Sweden and Denmark in terms of the where it kind of falls. Um, but it is expensive when you come here. Going out to eat, I yeah. mean... Like 10 and 20 dollars is a lot whenever you compare that we could go to a bar here and if it's a draft you know, and depending on the night, you can get a draft, uh, two fifty three dollars. You can get a bottle, you know, two fifty three dollars, uh, and then all the way up, you know, to eight eight dollars a beer. Yes, but whenever you're talking, you know, ten to twenty, that's more if you're going to a baseball game or American football game, um, going to a theme park. Those are those types of prices for me and for us. You you understand why people eat like takeaway pizza and hot dogs because it's so expensive to go out and eat here, but it is really expensive no matter where you go. I would say it's about 30% more expensive here in Norway than it is in the U.S. So just be prepared for that for going out to eat, hotels, transportation. So now is that th kind of he's saying about you know expect around 30% more than what we're used to? So would that be um, kind of because of the the tax differences, or is that just because of price literally just just in general difference or is it a combination of price difference plus because you all have different taxes um you know i'm sure it's a combination right and all these kind of things it's expensive you want to go see the fjords in, in bergen from here you're going to pay a pretty penny okay now usually what we're going to be spending most of our money is when we go actually go eat and lots of people ask mark what should I eat when I go there? Well, if you want to have traditional food, you know, reindeer and elk and salmon, those are the big things here. Also, you got I would definitely like to try reindeer. I've never, never had that. Um, I've had elk, salmon, of course, you know, buffalo. Um, if I had to, if I had to guess, would would reindeer, would reindeer be closer to elk or deer? Because obviously, had deer, which would be venison. Um, but what, what, I guess, would you compare it closest to? Right? That looks like a Kit Kat with a bird. Almost looks like a kiwi bird. You gotta have a quick lunch or quick lunch. It's basically their version of Kit Kat. It's actually pretty good. You should try that when you're here. Okay? Um, but in terms of when you go out to eat, do I tip? Yes, you do tip when you are here. You know, 5 to 10% is fine. You know, 10%, you know, if they saved you from choking, you can give them... You are not required to tip. There is a service charge on your bill. However, Norwegians tend to tip around 5 to 15%. Okay. And, and you know, I've always heard um, that, like, the tipping in the United States was a foreign concept to a lot of people, and especially to a lot of countries, because in a lot of countries, they don't do tipping or anything like that, and it's considered rude, um, or it's just flat out not acceptable. So I did not know that tipping was something um, that was a thing, really, because I've always, again, have always heard or been told, you know, that it's not outside of the U.S., that it's just kind of uncommon. But then again, it does says you're not required to tip at hell, and in the United States, you're not required to tip either, and a lot of people don't tip, or if they do tip, it's very little, definitely not 5 to 15, well, maybe 5%, you know. 10%, but 5, 6%, you're totally okay with that kind of tipping. Now, in terms of what you're going to do, now, like I said, beer is very expensive, you know, 10, 12, 15 dollars for a beer. Um, they do have a state control monopoly on alcohol, so if you want to get some something more stronger or some, some wine or something like that, you will have to go to the local monopoly, you know, place that, that runs the, the wine selling, so you do have to deal with that. But if you go to bars and stuff like that, you can get beer, no problem, wine, no problem. The bars will be fine, but if you want to get something for home, well, then you got to go to a special store for that. In terms okay. of... So now, special store for that. So my question would be, how easy is it for you to go to a special store like that? Right? You know, how easy is it is... How easy would it be for you... Let's like, say if you wake up tomorrow and you didn't have to go to work, okay? And you just decided tomorrow I'm going to wake up and whatever time I feel like it, I'm going to go to the closest place where I can buy a bottle of liquor and bring it home. How easy is that for you? Because for me... I could walk like five minutes down the street and get all the beer I want. I mean, I could drive five minutes down the road and I could get all the liquor I could possibly want. You know, in the town of 30,000 people that I live in, I mean, I think we have at least seven, eight 
maybe 10 actual liquor stores that are specifically liquor, spirits, wine, beer only. But on top of that, every gas station here has beer uh, and wine. Every grocery store has liquor, beer, and wine. Uh, pharmacies have alcohol. I mean, it's... Uh, you can't go somewhere pretty much without alcohol being prevalent. If we're going to go shopping, shopping hours here, basically, they're normal European hours. You know, they're closed on Sunday, closed a little bit earlier on Saturday, and one day a week they're a little bit longer. I think Thursday sometimes they're longer. But you want to get your shopping done by 6, some places 8, but just know that shopping is going to be done during the day. Right. Okay. Um, another thing you should know, museums sometimes will have extended hours in the summertime because that's when the tourists are coming. They'll go from 4 to 6 o'clock or maybe from 6 to 8 o'clock, so just be, be, be paying attention for that. Now, okay. if you are going to be coming here, you're going to want to take... In which I would love to go to the museums. I'm a huge fan of museums, actually. And I believe that comes from uh, growing up every summer for about 10 years. My, you know, For about 10 years every summer, I would go visit my grandparents. And my grandparents lived like 30 minutes from Washington, D.C. So, you know, every summer we would go to to Washington, D.C. We would visit the Smithsonian Museums. You know, we would go to... All the, the actual landmarks and all the, the historical places, you know, that we have, <clears throat> such as, like, we would go to the Arlington National Cemetery. We would see the eternal flame for John F. Kennedy. We would see the Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers and watch the changing of the guard. We would go by the White House. We would go by, um, you know, the, the Washington Monument, the Abraham Lincoln statue, and all the different things. And I enjoyed that, and I think because I have such fond memories— and, you know, growing up, spending that time with my grandparents um, and, and learning history, you know, I think that's a big reason why today, as an adult, I love history so much and I appreciate other cultures and want to learn other cultures. And would love to go to other countries and other places and, and go to your museums and really just just see you know, and, and experience and just something different than what I'm used to every day here in the United States. You know, I mean, there's a lot of places I could go. Like I said in the very beginning, there's a lot of places I could travel that I've never been to in the United States, but I always had that. I feel like I always had that opportunity. You know, I mean, I could take my five days off per year and go across, you know, and that's the whole thing, right? Because we talk about, you only know, get five days off per year is my vacation, right? Compared to your amazing weeks off of paid vacation per year. But, you know, I could take my five days. That's not enough to go anywhere, to, especially not to go to another country. So my five days could go, you know, I could easily make a day trip, you know, or, or fly eight hours to a different part of the, the country and explore. You know, I plan on going to Colorado um, here in a few months, maybe, hopefully, to visit a friend. You know, different things. But, man, I would just love to, to visit and just experience this stuff in person pictures like I'm making my videos and you have to have your plugs now the plugs here are just like in mainland Europe the two circle plugs that go in versus the US where the two straight plugs you know your converters are on your phone and your tablets and your and your computers so you're okay there so you don't have to worry about it blowing up and you know and going up in flames like a Viking King kind of thing don't worry about that just know the plugs are the circle plugs when you come here in terms of transport um, the public transport here in, in Norway is very good it's efficient um, but it is expensive, and what you need to realize is when you look and say, oh, that shouldn't take that long, it will take longer here because of the fjords and the terrain here. It does take longer than you expect to drive places or take the train places or the bus places, so just be prepared for that and have that planned out in your days, okay? Now, next thing I want to talk about is in terms of dress. I'm here in the end of May, and I'm it's cool. I mean, it's in the... 40s at night, you know, so like, you know, 6 Celsius at night and in the early, low 60s, high 50s during the day at the end of May. It is chilly here, and so what I recommend is make sure you can layer up, you know, have your sweat, hooded sweatshirt and your jacket and things like that, so if the sun does come out, it does get pretty beautiful. You know, sunblock would have been nice for me the other day, whoops. Um, but just know it is chilly here, in the winter it's very cold, yeah. but if you come in the winter, the two things you should do in the winter here is skiing and yeah. see the northern lights. Of course. It's beautiful, okay? Yeah. Thing and that's, that's where, uh, you know, see, and that's, that's right there, okay? I could always go see the northern lights here in the United States. Of course, I'd have to go up to Alaska. But, you know, I could go to Alaska. 
I could uh, do a, a, an Alaskan cruise, you know, and see the Northern Lights, but I wouldn't want to, you know. Like I feel like not only what better way to top off an experience like going to another country and you know seeing all there is to see and experience here, but also to see the Northern Lights. You know, that's just something that would be more memorable and to me would be I, I would rather wait. You know, like. I would personally rather wait to see the Northern Lights somewhere here than than to see the Northern Lights. You know, I could see them again in Alaska, but, you know, uh, I just would rather come here. I'd rather visit here. It just looks, I don't know. I just, I want to, man, I want to travel so bad and just do something other than here. I can always visit places here. Thing to do in here is go and take a tour and go see the fjords. They're just gorgeous here. Take my word for it, okay? And the last thing I want to talk about is now. What is he meaning by? Uh, now, gosh, I'm gonna try and pronounce this. The, the fjords. What is he talking about? What does he mean by that? Safety. Norway is very safe. You do not have to worry about things. You know, obviously, pay attention. Late night in Oslo, you know, you might be some drunk people around or in Bergen and stuff like that. Some beggars here and there, but nothing's really that bad. And Norway is a very safe place to go. That's why, and in general, Scandinavia is very safe. That's why I recommend to people, hey, if you want to go to a foreign country, they don't speak English as a native language, go anywhere in Scandinavia, you're going to be okay because it's safe and most of the people speak English. So I hope that helps you give a few ideas of the differences between the U.S. and Norway so you oh, can enjoy does. Norway more does. when you come. You can see cool architecture like this at the, the uh, Norwegian Folk Museum here folk in Oslo. Museum. Um, if you want to learn more, five things you're going to love and hate about coming to Norway. Hey man, I'm glad that you told me that that was what that place was because I was going to ask you guys, um, you know, I, I was going to ask you about about what that type of building and what this place was that he was at. You know, I uh, definitely like. I mean, that's a cool structure. It, it's yeah, man. Norway, what yeah. to see and do in Oslo. Five things that'll shock you about Norway. Yeah. Check us out on our website at WaltersWorld.com. Yeah. All right, so I'm definitely going to check out some more of his videos for sure. Um, but if you guys have any suggestions, especially, you know, videos that are comparing your country, uh, whichever country you're from to the Americans or to the United States, or just things like this, you know, facts like 10, 10 things that will shock you about uh, Sweden or, you know, what the, the loves and hates and all that, you know, different things like that. And I, and I want to love, not, I want to love, I want to learn more about your culture because I love learning about different cultures and just learning just how how vastly different everything is from what I've grown to know and, and know to na now about the United States. You know, I, I just want to keep learning, and I'm so thankful right now that I have the opportunity to, and that we have the wonderful internet. You know, where 20 years ago we didn't. So we had the internet 20 years ago, but you get what I'm saying. We didn't have this type of content. We didn't have this type of ability to learn. So, yeah. I think that's it for today. It's me, Bryce and P. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you didn't, that's okay. And you're not going to hurt my feelings if you didn't. And like I said, yeah, uh, leave me some comments, um, especially some answers to, to the questions that I've had. And I hope you have a good day, good night, whatever time it is that you see this. That's it. It's me, Bryce and P. And goodbye.